Hath he in anger shut up his tender mercies? Salah. Forbid it. So, no. Forbid it. The stark contrast between God's saving acts in the past and God's apparent absence in the present causes the psalmist to feel abandoned by God. If God has changed, then the psalmist has no hope, a conclusion that he struggles to reject. God has not changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And what's amazing about that is that we think he changes. We think he changes, but he doesn't. He's the same. He's going to use the same game plan with you that he's been using with all the other people that came in the world and been successful. Right? He's been successful. There is no shadow of turning with him. We kind of know his methods already. His toolkit is laid out before us in the word. He uses the same methods yesterday, today, and forevermore. We think, oh, he's not doing that thing anymore. He's not healing people anymore. He's not, he's not doing miracles anymore. God isn't speaking to people anymore. We think he changed his game plan. Did he? Did he change? The difference is us. The people in the Bible, they prayed a whole entire year. Every day. They did something wrong. They took their clothes off and sat in public with sackcloth and ashes on top of their head. We do something wrong. We just, oh, 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 it's all good. Thank you, Jesus, you forgave me. And we keep on going. It was a whole different kind of, of orientation in those days. You see, you, you think about Abraham and all those guys, the patriots, Elijah. Elijah prayed so often and so powerfully that he could make it stop raining because he knew what God said and he still had to get down on his knees and bend his head between his knees and pray harder. And we just, we don't even get on our knees. We don't even get on our knees and we think we're going to get all the prayers answered, right? We just, Lord, you know I'm praying to you right now as I walk through my gym, you know? And we think... <laughs> God is not the, God has changed on us. We don't got it like he do, like they had it back in the day. No, it's, it's our orientation towards praying. It's our orientation towards fasting. It's our orientation towards believing. It's what we're praying for. We're going to consume it on our lust anyway. We have so much. We're so blessed. Why not pray for others with the same intensity that you would pray for yourself? If you can't see a miracle for you, pray for a miracle for somebody else that you get to observe. That's what I want. That's what I want. God, you don't got to do nothing for me. Do something for sister so-and-so and make sure I'm there to witness it. That's what strengthens our faith. That's how churches start to grow. That's how people start to, to, to get into a revival. Revival has got to happen at some point. It's called the latter something or another, right? They call it the latter something or another. Is it, I don't know what the word is that they use, but it, it comes from above, don't it? And it, and, it, and it goes on the just and the unjust, don't it? Right? So latter rain, he gives it to everybody. Pour out his spirit on who? 50% of the flesh. Some people are going to accept it, and some people are going to reject it, obviously, because not everybody's going to be walking around here saying, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Some people are going to be like, I, uh, you know, they're still going to be oriented toward their they father. And Jesus tells us that. I think I'm out of time, right? You didn't even stop me, man. Come on. God is so good. God is so good. Let's get to the last, the last little segment here. And then I'll quit. I wanted to do... Biblical faith often implies uncertainty and suspense as much as confidence and assertion. I'm going to read that again. Biblical faith often implies 
uncertainty and suspense as much as confidence and assertion. Sometimes uncertainty and suspense, especially in the face of evil and God's seeming absence, can be almost unbearable. Yet, uncertainty must never be about God or his loving and righteous character and trustworthiness. What's it supposed to be about? Whether or not it's his will. Whether or not it's what he wants. It's not about who he is or what he can do. It's about whether or not it's his will. The psalmist may be uncertain about the future, but they often appeal to God's unfailing love and faithfulness. Likewise, we are to follow the same example. Summon all of your powers to look up, not down at your difficulties. Then you will never faint by the way. You will soon see Jesus behind the cloud, reaching out his hand to help you. And all you have to do is give him your hand in simple faith and let him lead you. As you become trustful, you will, through faith in Jesus, become hopeful. Isn't that everybody's hope? Everybody's hope that we could get so trustful in Jesus that nothing in the world phases us. Of course, there's going to come times of doubt and uncertainty of what God's will is, of what God's plan is, but not about who God is. David couldn't, couldn't make God do anything no more than we can. And he knew that. That's where the uncertainty came from. But he was certain that God's loving and faithfulness was going to come through for him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, gracious Master, everything that we are comes from you, Lord. We accept your love. We accept your, your, your faithfulness, Lord, on our behalf because we are not always loving and we are not always faithful, Lord. But we trust you, Lord, to help us to be more like you, Lord, to put your spirit in us, Lord, to replace our, fleshly, our, our stony hearts with a heart of flesh, Lord, that comes from you. Forgive us for our sins and our shortcomings. Be with our service today. Help us to go out into the world and to tell others about you, Lord, to let others know that you are soon to return and that your love and your power is still the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Esteem. Thank you for all you do. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath to everyone online. We hope you enjoy this service in the comfort of your home. And may it be a wonderful blessing for each and every one of, of us today. Announcements today. Children's Sabbath, beginning kindergarten, age you may see this, sorry. <laughs> Bert, age four, with Jennifer and Angela Vanessa. Primary, age five to nine, P Sister Pam and Avika. Junior, early teens, age 10 to 14, Sister Cecilia and Janice Gray. And youth ages 15 to 18, Nahana and Marjolaine. Announcements. Kids Zone is next Saturday, 2.10. Topic for such a time is this. Is accepting snacks, water, and donations. Please see Dominique, Sister Dominique Alexander, for more info about snacks I days. Kids Zone is held every second Sabbath unless otherwise announced. All youth, young adults, Invisible Wounds will be presented by February 24th. We pray that you will be able to come. See the flyer on the church bulletin board, and I understand this is going to be a very good topic, so we hope to see a lot of people attending on that day. AYS study program will be held 
Every second sab Sabbath after fellowship meal, everyone is invited. There will be testimonies, prayer, icebreaker, games, decisions, and current issues, events, day to day. Things people are dealing with using these words. I think this is done by our dear brother over there, um, Brother Margelin. Last, the last time he did it, last month, it was very nice. I enjoy that. Men's ministry. Oh, ladies in, interested in women's retreat at Camp Kakulaka, February 9-11. Please see, the, see uh, Trisha Bridges. We are coordinating rooms and rides. Trisha Bridges, Trisha's not here yet. So, um, Men's ministry convention 2024 will be held March 8 to 10, 2024. Go to the, the website and the bulletin there. And it's also... Some information in the bulletin over there. Anyone interested in receiving Bible studies, please contact the pastor. Bible studies are in. And if you guys will take a few moments to introduce yourself to someone next to you, we do that in about, take about a minute or two to do that. Say welcome and happy Sabbath. I think this is the first time we're doing it for the year. I just want to thank you all very much for doing the welcoming. I just want to take a special to say thank you to our, our um, sound crew the back there. We know you sometimes you don't get recognized. Brother Jesse, Brother Jim, Sister Laurie the back there. You guys do a very fantastic job. Thank you guys so much. Oh, and Sister Sabrina. It's time for a call to worship. And I have a special guest who's going to do that for us today. She's not a guest, she's a sister. And she is the wife of a wonderful, one of our singers today. And I ask you, my dear sister, to come forward and give us a welcome call to worship. And you will say a prayer for us. Good afternoon, everyone, and happy, good morning, everyone, and happy Sabbath. <laughs> So today's scripture reading is going to be found in Romans 10, verse 1 through 3. When you're there, say amen. Okay. And I will be reading it to your hearing. And it reads, Brethren, my heart desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them, for that, for I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Let us pray. Please stand. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this holy Sabbath day. We pray, Lord, that your spirit may dwell within us, O Lord, as we continue this Sabbath service, Lord. Pray, Lord, that you may forgive us for our sins. May you cleanse us from our unrighteousness, O oh Lord. And may everyone who's participating in this platform, Lord, be with you, O oh Lord, and that you may bless this service. In all this, we do pray in your son's precious mighty name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you.
you very much, Sister Delana. And I know you all just get a, a glimpse of her for the first time. But you're going to see her on the 24th. I think it's the 24th. She'll be doing something special up here with a special guest. It's time for our tithes and offer for our children. Uh, may you send all the little kids up here to pick up the dollars. Sister Sabrina, I'm sorry I didn't I forgot your name at the back there. But she also do an awesome job. Not only the back there, with the kids and with everyone. And I know you kids is gonna in for a treat. Here is Sister Sabrina to give you your story. Oh no, now I'm scared. I was already nervous. Okay, so let's just talk about it. I'm going to offend some people here and I'm sorry. I'm really nervous, okay? I'm kicking off Black History Month. In case you haven't noticed, I'm very pale. <laughs> Just a little pale. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but the thing is, is you know what? People like me have done a very bad job in telling you some of your history. So I'm very nervous to start off out here because I don't want to get it wrong. Why do we celebrate Black History Month? Why is it important to celebrate Black History Month? Why? So that we can learn about people that have already died. Okay, yeah, learn about people who've already passed away, yes? Um, so, so we can learn about the people um, who, who fought for Civil rights. That's good too. Excellent, excellent. Oh, you want to talk? People who fought for freedom. Go up and take on people from the devils. <laughs> to protect people from the devil. You know what? She's not wrong. Okay, she is not wrong. It's all right. There's so many reasons. All the reasons you gave are absolutely right. We want to learn about people who fought for freedom and who fought to, to have rights that are the same as everybody else. We need, to, we need to learn those things. You know what, it's also important that we celebrate Black History Month because like I said, so much of history have been written by people who are not black. And like I said, sometimes, a lot of times, we 
didn't get it right. So it's important that we take the time to learn about your history, our history. Because it's not just your history, it's our history too. And we need to celebrate it. Now, when we think about people in history, we tend to think of people who were first, right? Who did things first, or who fought really hard, right? So today I'm gonna tell you about a lovely lady by the name of Miss Ruth Temple. Jessie, can you give her a picture? Oh, wow. It kind of bleached her out. Miss Ruth Temple. Do you, any of you know the name Ruth Temple? No? Do you know the name Ruth Temple? You do? Who's Ruth Temple? The king. You know what? Ruth, I can see where she got it. <laughs> She's going biblical here. All right. That is the lovely Miss Ruth Temple. And she is actually the first person to open up a clinic in Los Angeles, in Southeast Los Angeles. And she is most definitely the first black woman, black physician, to open up a clinic in Southeast Los Angeles that served the community. <laughs> Ruth Bader Ginsburg. <laughs> We're going a totally different way. <laughs> Also, Miss Temple and her family, along with some others, and I apologize, I don't have the name, they also brought the first black church to Los Angeles. Seventh-day Adventist church, first black Seventh-day Adventist church to Los Angeles. She's a very important woman. And still today, Jesse, can you click the slide? She actually has, the clinic is named after her. Dr. Ruth Temple Health Center, because she is actually one of the founders of community health. And we've not, I had never heard her name. I had never heard her name. This is why it's so important that we celebrate Black History Month. We need to bring these beautiful people who've done amazing things to the forefront. Not only was she a woman, she was a woman of color, she was an Adventist, and one, she was raised in her home. She was taught everyone deserves the same, the same education, the same medical treatment, the same care, the same love. Her father was a pastor, not an Adventist pastor, because she actually didn't become Adventist till her adulthood, but he taught her that everyone needs to be treated the same, no matter what. And it's so true. We all need to treat each other with love, with compassion, with kindness. Do you agree? Yeah, I think it's a good idea. I want to encourage you guys to go and learn about Miss Ruth Temple. I believe they also stated that she was one of the first either female or black physicians to graduate from Loma Linda. Yeah, she has a really big, rich history that it was just amazing to learn about and I only had time to like glam, glint, glimpse, glance at the history. Look, look I, didn't ha I didn't do a really deep dive, but I mean just, uh, what a woman, what a woman, what a person, what an amazing person. Jessie, can you show her again? Because she needs her bright, beautiful face shown up there. Yeah, she was very influential in community health. It's important that we learn these people so that we can remember them, to honor them, and to hopefully follow them and continue to keep that great history alive, continuing to build community health, continuing to preach to our community, continuing to learn and grow and do better than those before us. All right, guys, hopefully I didn't mess this up. But, are you guys ready? You want to have prayer? You want to pray? Okay, but you know what? I need you to stand up and pray. Okay, I, all of you stand up for a second. Stand up for a second. I, I, see, I see something here. I see we got some wiggles and some giggles. Okay, so before we go back to our seat, let's work some of those out real quick. Okay, are you ready? You're going to wiggle and giggle. You ready? Set. Wiggle and giggle. Get 
him out. Get him out. Get him out. <laughs> get him out. 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 Okay. Are they out? All right. Go ahead. Have prayer. <laughs> Bow your heads and close your eyes for prayer. Dear Jesus, we thank you for this day. And thank you for your son Jesus for dying on the cross for us and making Black History Month. Amen. Everybody, please stand up. Um, thank you, Lord. Thank you for helping us today and giving us this morning. Thank you for helping us this morning for the eggs. And thank you for God to make us happy and make us in prayer. I pray my name. Amen. Amen. Okay, you guys, go back to your seats. Thank you, Sister Sabrina. I know she would have made something out of that. <laughs> now it's time for adults uh, tithes and offering. And uh, may your attendants please um, come up to pick up the tithes and offering. Hello? Oh, just not high enough. Is that better? Heavenly Father, what a privilege that you have given us to return our tithes and bless our church with our offerings. And when we give these things, Lord, we want you to bless them. That we'll see our results of people finding the Lord in Christ's name. Welcome back to our praise team.
worship you. I worship you. The reason I live is to worship you. shadows in the light of you when I found the joy of reaching your heart when my will becomes enthroned in your love when all things that surround become shadows in the light of you I worship you I worship you
think about the Lord, how He saved me, how He raised me, how He filled me with the Holy Ghost, how He healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how He picked me up and turned me around, how He placed my feet. for a sweet hour of prayer. Sister Evelyn is going to lead us in. Maybe I got it the wrong place. Uh, for those people online and for us in here, I've asked Evelyn to come up. It's the most important part of our prayer service or our church service is when we go to the Lord in prayer especially thinking about so many in our church that are sick or unable to be here in church or un having health problems of some kind so Evelyn if you offer our prayer today good morning church I'm so happy to be here this morning, and I'm so happy to see so many of you here. We have so much to thank the Lord for. I know you have some praises on your heart, some burdens on your heart, but those burdens are lifted if you give them to the Lord. And you know, we have so much to be grateful for, and I was so proud this week. I was listening, I think it was either yesterday or the day before, to uh, Ephesus Junior Academy. They had their spelling bee on. And I want to say we have Jazz Alexander who won the spelling bee. Jazz, where are you? I was so proud of Jazz. I think she might have even been the youngest one in there, but she beat all of them out. And so we are so grateful that the Lord gives wisdom to our young people. And we are so happy to have them serving the Lord and giving their best to the master. Yes. Now at this time, there are those who may have requests that already have been given. And you may have something on your heart that you haven't made known to others, but God knows what it is. So if you want to raise your hand to thank God for his mercies or to pray for something, I know I do. He's brought me a long ways. And today I was able to drive to church and I drove last week, so I'm thankful for that. And there's so many things we can thank the Lord for. So as we begin to have our prayer this morning, we're going to have our song first, and then we'll have prayer. And of those of you who want to uh, kneel in prayer, please do. Wish I could, but I, I can, but I might not be able to get back up. But, <laughs> but at this time, we'll have our prayer song. Tis the blessed hour when our hearts Lord repent as we gather to Jesus our Savior and friend if we come to him in faith his protection to share what a
Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to be in your presence this morning. We are thankful, Lord, that you've given us the strength to come forward to church today. And we thank you, Lord, for those who aren't here, but those who are listening on Zoom. Lord, we lift up so many things before your throne of grace and mercy this morning. And we know that with God, all things are possible, but without you, we can do nothing. And Lord, you've said in your word that if we put our trust in you, if we have faith, if we believe, we can ask for whatever we want in Jesus' name, and he will do it according to his will. Lord, keep us faithful to you. Keep us trusting you. We thank you and praise your name for all of your goodness and your mercies to us. Most of all, Lord, we thank you for allowing us to be in your presence because we know that as we come before your throne of grace and mercy, you will look into our hearts, you will forgive us of our sins, you will cleanse us from unrighteousness. This morning, our church is lifting up praise and thanksgiving for your goodness and for your mercies. And Lord, today, as we have our worship today, we ask that you will speak to us through our uh, Elder Donald Edwards this morning, and he brings the word from above. We pray that you will speak through him and to our hearts, giving us the message that you want us to have today, this, this morning. And Lord, we ask your blessings on our children. Continue to strengthen God and keep them. Thank you for helping Jazz to win that spelling bee. And Lord, uh, thank you for what you are going to do for all of our young people as well as the older ones of us. Keep us close to you. Keep us trusting you. Keep us faithful to you. But most of all, Lord, prepare us for your soon coming kingdom. May we all be ready to meet you in peace. It is my prayer in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Praise team. Thank you, Sister Evelyn, for your wonderful words. Now it's time for a sermon, and I will introduce you to Brother Donald Edwards, Elder Brother Donald Edwards. you've noticed the talent we have in this church. <laughs> Who can teach the kids a lesson like Sabrina can? Huh? And Jasper this morning in the Sabbath school lesson. And Jason, the talent we have in this church I thank God that each one of us in this room this morning is standing up for the truth as it has presen presented to us by God. Let's invite our Holy Spirit to be with us as we open the word of God, Heavenly Father. We invite thy presence to walk amongst us May the Holy Spirit be with us and helping us to feel Jesus' presence here. That as we feel his presence, we'll recognize it by our reverence. 
is my prayer in Christ's holy name. Amen. <clears throat> my subject this morning, I wanted to introduce it because it's one of the hardest things in my life. I started 10 years ago trying to figure out how to commit myself to God. Some people refer to it as surrendering their lives to God. Helping me each morning to wake up and walk with God. How do you do that? I started 10 years ago and I headed out because I wanted to share the gospel, the things that I have learned. I met some people and the first thing I did is start talking about the Sabbath and the state of the dead and those things and it didn't take long we were in an argument and I walked away ashamed of myself. We learn so much every day <clears throat> about how we present the truth to the wonderful people that are in the world today. So many other experiences that I have had where the Lord impressed me one day to walk into a restaurant and there were people arguing and we are the peacemakers, am I right? We are the peacemakers and I felt the Lord wanted me to just say something to calm it down and all I did is stand there and did nothing. What a disappointment. So many opportunities that we have. So many times that we can show to people in the world today that we are the peacemakers to bring happiness, to show our concern. I love it when we have people in the church, when I watch them walk up to another person and say, the Lord impressed me to pray with you this morning. Sometimes we fail. We need so much prayer today. Reminds me, I was talking with Debbie's father. He is probably a person that is very up to date on the things happening in the world today. He says, guess what, Don? They're talking about digitizing our currency. He says, that's a fulfillment of what Ellen G. White said when she said you wouldn't be able to buy or sell. It's happening all around us. How do we commit ourselves to God? How do we surrender? We get up in the morning and we ask God to be with us. We try to do what is good. We even ask the Lord to go with us. We end up at a market and what we bought cost $10. We give them $10 pick up our groceries, we leave. We're two miles away and we look at our change and we see they gave us back $20 in change. All of a sudden, we got a decision to make. Mm -hmm. Have you ever realized that we have developed habits in our lives that cause us to make the wrong choices before we even analyze whether this is right or wrong. Have you ever noticed habits in our life? Where we respond to those habits 
never having the opportunity to choose with whether it's right or wrong. Fail again. Sometimes I feel like every day a new failure in my life. And I, I say to the Lord, is there anything good? So I wanted to talk to you about my struggle. Even today, how do I get up in the morning and ask God to send a person into my midst that I can give them a word of encouragement, that I can pray with them, that I can help them in their walk with the Lord. Send me something, Lord. And help me, Lord, to have the courage to respond when they do come. Surrender. One of the hardest things a Christian can do in the world today is learn how to surrender. <clears throat> I looked in the Bible and I have not found a place in the Bible where the word surrender is used. It's an idea that's been used over and over again. How in the world do we get up and ask God to use me that day? I looked in the Bible and I wanted to know, Lord, is there an example in God's word of how I can present the wonderful truths that we find there and see the best result. Can you think of anybody? Anybody think of a place in the Bible where it talks about how to live our faith, how to present our truth and give us a good result? Can you think of a place? It was hard for me until I went to the Apostle Paul and read about when he went before Agrippa. You know, the Lord told us that one day we will stand before kings and queens and men of power. And so Paul stood that day. Do you remember what he had to say? He didn't tell them about the state of the dead, the Sabbath, all the wonderful truths that we have learned in God's word. He got up and told about how his life was until he met the Lord. And what the Lord did to his life and what his life is like now. Do you remember what the result was? King Agrippa says, Thou, Paul, almost persuadest me to be a Christian. Who is it that God chose to present the truths in God's word? Is it us? No, God says that he sent someone into the world to teach us all truths about the Sabbath, to teach us all truths about the state of the dead. Who was that? He's, I send you into the world and he will teach you the truths that is in God's word. Isn't that the Holy Spirit? It's not my job to teach the truths. It's my job to present them to Jesus and Jesus sends the Holy Spirit to lead them into all truths. They may turn around and say, I've lunch someone for lunch. Now, Don, tell me about the Sabbath. 
So I have to know about the Sabbath because I may be confronted. Sometimes I wonder how many of us in here, if someone asks us to share what we know about this or that, if we had an answer to that. As I studied, it took me to a verse in God's Word, and this happens when you get old. You got to pull these things and use them. Can't wait to get to heaven where God will say, Don, throw them away. It's found in Romans, the ninth chapter. And this helped me to understand what my problem was. I can say for the last 10 years, I have tried every day to commit myself to the Lord, to surrender my life. One failure after another. It says in Romans, the ninth chapter, starting with verse 30, what shall we say then? That the Gentiles which followed after, that followed not after righteousness, haven't attained in righteousness even the righteousness which is of faith, but Israel which followed after the law of righteousness hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore, in other words, why? Paul's asking why? Because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. For they stumbled at the stumbling stone. Now what was that? Who, who was the stumbling stone? That stumbling stone is what, the, what they rejected. The very thing that would have helped them to understand what so often is misunderstood is how to attain unto righteousness. As it is written, behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone, a rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Then as I came, there was, as it continued on, in chapter 10 and verse 1, Brethren, my heart desires and prays to God for Israel is they, that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal in God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted or surrendered or committed their lives unto the righteousness of God. The premise here is that no one accepts the righteousness of God until they give up trusting in their own righteousness. You know, you go back and this didn't start today. It started years ago back during the time of Christ and it's now even to this day. We get up in the morning and we strive to do good. Have you done that today? Can anybody raise your hand and say you've been faithful? You, are, you have been, uh, what's the word for it? Successful. It brings us to the point where I cry out, Lord, 
I cannot do anything without you. But I can do anything when I have you in my life. <clears throat> Many of the Jews back then misunderstood because they were trying to be righteous and then doing what was right. What is right? Every time we try, we find out we fail. <clears throat> it's easy for me to get up in the morning. I'm not going to fail for this today, or I'm not going to do this today. And I may be successful in it. Maybe like the rich man who came to Jesus. He says, Lord, I've kept the commandments from my youth up. I've been good. And Jesus turned to him, go and sell all you have and come and follow me. You ever thought about that? The disciples, Jesus turned to them and said, follow me. There was no question. They never thought about the fact that they had people that they were responsible to, who, who they provided for. There are people that looked to them and they walked away from that with no questions asked and followed the Lord. I wonder what would happen this morning if someone in this room felt like they were being called to speak for the Lord. They would get up in the presence of this, walk up on this podium and say, Don, stand by. The Lord has something for me to say. It's going to happen. God says if it doesn't, that it's going to happen where we don't care about anything in the world today because we love God so much and we speak the truth as loud as we can even if it costs my job. It may be throw me in jail. Whatever it takes to stand up for the Lord. Then we come to behavior. That's what it takes. I'm going to be good every day. I'm going to behave every day. And behavior is good. Behavior, the scriptures are not against good behavior. But the scriptures are very opposed to good behavior as the basis of our Christian life. Because we can't do it anyway. But there's another way of looking at it. And that is when we center our Christian walk with a relationship with God. Relationship with Christ is different. The relationship of Christian life that understands that the primary issue in a relationship with God is us. Surrendering to God or committing our lives to God each morning giving up the idea that we cannot do anything in changing our lives 
we may be able to attain some outward things in our lives. But that's like the Pharisees that did. Again, I'd like to ask how many have been successful in being good, even one day. Have you ever noticed that the devil knows each one of us in this room? He knows our habits. He knows just how to get to us. And the one thing he does more than anything else is there's something in our life that if he can cause us to fail, we will stop praying and we will stop reading the word of God. You ever notice that? He knows it exactly. We, he makes us feel so guilty for falling to something in our life and we just can't seem to pray. We can come to church and listen to that because that's something we do every week. But now we feel ashamed to pray. We open the word of God and we don't even feel like we're worthy to open the word of God because that happens in our lives. He knows just how to do it. And if he's not successful, he's going to try it and try it until he is. Because his goal is to stop you from praying. Because praying is the power necessary for you to understand the righteousness God wants to do in us and for us. Have you ever thought about this? We pray to God, right? How does God talk to us? How? He talks to us in his word. So if you want to know what God's will is for your life, you have to open up the word of God. And as you read it, God will tell you his will for our lives in answer to our prayers. We talk to him in prayer. He talks to us in the study of his word. How about morality? Mount morality is good, isn't it? The more morals that we have in this world today, the better off we are. But I know people today are so weak, they can't even be moral. You probably know them too. In our attempt to live the Christian life, we seem to interfere so much with God. I thought about this. When we let God come into the life, it demands a change. Sometimes he looks at us and he says, are you really interested in walking with me? I need to improve your health and start you to become a vegetarian. If you want to walk with me, I need to help you in how you deal with your children. Whoops. If you want to walk with me, I want to teach you how to respond to your husband or your spouse in a different way. He knows how to get to you and he will. Unless your relationship with his is centered around a relationship where I get up in the morning and I say to the Lord, I'm not going to do anything to do today 
unless you show me what you want me to do today. But more than that, Lord, I need you to help me to not get in the way. We always get in the way. Lord, I want you in my life, but Lord, I'm not ready to give up on coffee yet. I get up in the morning, that's the first thing I want. Lord, I want you to walk with me. But they've asked me to do something in the church, and I don't have time for it. How many times do we get in the way with what God wants us to do? Wants us to do in our lives, for us, and in us. See, God gives us his life and power only when we give up on ours. There's a symbol in the scriptures about this, and the symbol is death. That's an illustration of a life of surrender. Paul even talked about it in Romans, the sixth chapter, verse one to four. He that is dead, he started out with it, what shall we, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Then he says something rather interesting. He that is dead is freed from sin. You see, when Christ is revived in the life, we die. We have to die daily or we get in the way of God's work in our life. God's given us choice through surrender, experiencing a spiritual death to sin. This means we are considered, we consider ourselves as dead in any way capable of producing righteousness. You see, that's not our work. That's God's work. How can we change our lives if we don't have God in our life every day? Because if we don't have him in our life every day, we get in God's way. I have to do this. I have to do that. We have so many excuses, don't we? We have excuses even for excuses. We, sometimes we come to the same conclusion. Can the Ethiopian change his skin or the, the, uh, the leopard his spots? Can a clean thing come out of that which is unclean? Have you ever thought about the fact that one day you're going to live in the presence of holy angels and you're also going to live in the presence of a holy God? Visualize that sometimes. And when you do that, you say to the Lord, Lord, I can't do this unless you change this heart of mine, change my character. So we realize the problem.
is not without, but within us, in our own heart. Now the apostle brings up the cross. And uses the cross as an as a illustration of how to surrender our lives to him. Cross is the death. We can't kill ourselves. We can't sacrifice ourselves. The cross shows us that we need someone else to do it for us. And that's the Lord. If we open the door to the Lord, Jesus Christ, in our ongoing relationship with him, he's going to lead you to a more and more understanding of what it means to give up on self and depend on him. I'm going to read that again. He's going to, when we open the door to the Lord Jesus Christ, which is his work, he's going to lead you to a more, more understanding of what it means to give up on self and depend on him. He is to take the lead in our lives in the subject of surrender, on the subject of committing ourselves to him. It is all his work. Our work is to give or to open the door for him to do his work. By inviting him through his word and through prayer day by day. He comes in and he leads us to a greater understanding of righteousness. I fight with this every day in my own life. I'm an elder in the church. You would expect me to be better I have the same problems that you do every day. I can't, I can't leave my house. I can't drive my car. I can't speak to another person unless I've asked God to give me the words to say to protect me or keep me safe. I think about the many times you drive down the road Early in the morning, you get ready to turn to the right, and you turn, and all of a sudden, a car driving down the road without his lights on. Thank God for, for the Lord walking with you, right? Or you're driving down the road, and you think you've got everything under control, and you start to move over to the right lane and someone's in your blind spot? Well, what would I do if I didn't have the Lord in my life? I'm telling you, folks, that I can't do anything without the Lord because if I do, I'm a failure. There's so many things that I want to share with you to know how each day I can have the people I love in this congregation to not get up in the morning without the Lord. To not go to sleep at night without thanking him for getting me through the day. I wonder how many in this room have a prayer list of people they pray for consistently every day. 
How many in this room today have prayed to God and then looked to see if he answered? We forget about that part, don't we? Look back and see if he answered my prayer. I want to end my presentation today with, challenge, with number one, a challenge to you. And that challenge to you is to give up on self because you're not, you can't do anything when it comes to changing your heart. You can't do anything when it comes to making yourself righteous. You can't do anything to make it so one day you can stand in the presence of holy angels, in the presence of a holy God. It takes the Lord. This is a quote from my favorite author, found in the book Desire of Ages. Got to use these again. True character in Desire of Ages, page 307, is not shaped from without and put on. It radiates from within. If we wish to direct others in the path of righteousness, the principles of righteousness be enshrined in our own hearts. Our profession of faith may proclaim the theory of religion, but in our own practical piety that holds forth the word of truth the consistent life, the holy conversation, the unswavering integrity, the active benevolent spirit, the godly example. These are the mediums that God uses through which light is conveyed in the world today. It's not what you say, it's how you act. There are people in this church this morning that when they get to heaven, someone is going to walk up with them and say, you know something, it was because of you that I was led back to study God's word and find Christ in my life. It's not because of something you said. I watched your life and how you lived. And I said every day, that's the way I want to live. I love to see your prayer life. I love to see how you worship God. I love to see how you treat your spouse. And I love to see how you treat your children. May the Lord bless you in a special way that something I said will prick upon the heart and you'll surrender your life to the Lord to spend not one day on your own. That when you get up in the morning, you spend your time in prayer. Then you spend your time in God's word or maybe you like to be more like Daniel because he felt like he had to do it at lunchtime too. Then take to your knees in the evening only to thank him for getting you through the day. Getting you through the day where you didn't fall to some of those things that stopped you from praying and stopped you from reading God's word. We need Jesus in our lives today. I don't need to tell you today 
that everyone in this room probably will live to see the Lord come in the clouds of heaven. And I promise you that you won't make it unless you've established a relationship with the Lord so that when there's no food to eat, he'll provide it. No clothes to put on, he'll provide them. And he'll take you and stand you before powerful men in the government. And he'll say, don't worry about what you're going to say. The Holy Spirit will speak through you. I want to be used of the Lord. Amen. I want you to find the secret in being used of the Lord, and that's in the daily relationship with him without failure. You know, Ellen G. White tells us if our heart is changed, you know what she said? You want to know how the Lord is changing your heart or if he's changing your heart? She says, just ask yourself one question. How do you treat other people? And you will know if God is changing your heart. Heavenly Father, there's so many things that we as God's people have got to learn. More than anything, Lord, we got to learn how to get self out of the way how to depend 100% on you, how to live 100% in our walk with you, how not to speak to another person unless we have you guiding us in our life. And to this end, Lord, we pray only in the name of Jesus. Amen. May the, Lord, may the Lord bless you in your walk with God. May Thank you, Elder Donald. Be fruitful. welcome our praise team for a closing hymn just to remind you that next weekend next Saturday is Sabbath meal and as you go about your day enjoy your day and don't forget after potluck we will have our second AY after our meal next week around 2 30 i believe so we'll see our closing hymn
In Christ's holy name we pray, amen. The Lord bless you the rest of the Sabbath day.